Hello guys, I came to my friend Biggie Robbie's car service. Hello everyone. Because he said there was a 3.0 diesel engine, a BMW engine, that had some small problem. A customer contacted us to get him such a motor. We called around everywhere and came across a motor, to be exact, at our friend David Donka's. The thing is, the customer had already bought three motors in the past few weeks, and each one ran really well, was very, very good, had a good sound. But when they took it apart, they always noticed that there were problems with the crank and bearings. And then we agreed with David and the customer that we would take it apart together here in the workshop and see if this motor was good. The oil filter was nice. We determined that there was a small chance that it had a defect, but we would take it apart and see if it would be good. In principle, d 37 b is this typical of it that it has problem? Because you said that the customer already had several engines. I don't think these usually engines. have big problems, but this bearing is typical because we want to hand it over to the customer so that he can continue to be happy with it, at least for this long. How many kilometers does this engine In theory, has now? It has 180,000 kilometers on it, but the customer buys it so that he can make one for himself from his old engine and renovate it. And he needs a base that hasn't passed out or died At yet. At what kilometer do they fend? Well, around 200,000 so kilometers. So kilometer away It from has two fenting. oil changes left. I understand. Then we will wake him up now. This particular engine is a 180,000 km specimen, which is now completely disassembled by experts to see what a premium diesel can really do after so many miles. The engine displacement is 2,993 cubic centimeters, inline 6 cylinder construction, aluminum engine block, steel crankshaft, 4 valves per cylinder, and double camshaft. The injection is carried out by Bosch Common Rail system with an operating pressure of up to 1800 2000 bar with piezo injectors. The engine appeared in many BMW models, including the 3 Series E90, 91, 92, 93, the 5 Series in the E60 and F10, the 7 Series in the F01, the X3, X5, X6 models, and some diesel versions of the 6 Series were also equipped with them. A 3 liter inline 6 common rail turbo diesel that BMW produced between 2008 and 2014 and was launched as the successor to the classic M47. This was practically the backbone of BMW's premium diesel offering in the early 2010s. What was its real strength was its consumption. In a BMW 5 Series, it could get around 6 liters on the highway, 7 7.5 liters on the track and 8 or 9 liters in the city, all while providing sports car torque. The most well known problem with the N57 is the timing chain, which is located at the rear of the engine. If it stretches, the repair is extremely expensive as the engine needs to be removed. The high pressure pump, the EGR valve, the DPF problems are also common especially in urban use. One of the interesting things about the N57 is that this engine is also used to make one of the most powerful series produced diesel engine in the world. The 3 turbo 381 horsepower version in the BMW M550D. This particular engine will now be completely disassembled after 180,000 kilometers to find out how worn the bearings are, what condition the cylinder walls and pistons are in, and what a modern premium diesel is capable of in reality. Removing the oil pan is the key moment. From where we get accurate picture of the bearings, metal wear and the condition of the oil. The oil pan is below. The actual condition assessment can begin. There is nothing embellish here. The metal is always honest. The crankcase is completely visible. The crankshaft and connecting rods work here. And the oil circulates here, which keeps the entire engine alive. At this point, you can tell exactly how healthy the lubrication was during the engine's life. Now the experts are dismantling the lower bearing bridge also known as the bed plate. This is one of the supporting structural elements of the engine. The crankshaft bearings are located in this and the oil pump and balancer shaft system are also connected to it. If this removed, the crankshaft becomes completely free and from here we are truly in the heart of the engine. Now the flywheel is removed. This component dampens the vibration of the crankshaft and it is from here that the transmission receives power. The condition of the flywheel reveals a lot about the history of the engine and the drivetrain such as overheating, vibration and starting loads. Here you can see the oil pump and its drive chain. 
This system is responsible for ensuring that there is adequate pressure in the engine at every revolution. If this chain stretches or the pump wears out, the lubrication of the entire engine is at risk. This engine literally lives or dies on this chain. The condition of the crankcase reveals a lot. Discoloration, oil marks, wears and tear. These all tell a story about the engine history. The crankcase is completely open. The crankshaft connect throats and main bearings are now visible in their full reality. Now the crankshaft main bearings come into play. These bearings hold the crankshaft in the block and the entire load of the engine passes through here. If the oil film is lost here, the engine will be fatally damaged in a few seconds. The condition of the main bearing is crucial. Here microns are decisive. The wear pattern of the main bearing shows exactly whether there was an oil pressure problem, overload or a long oil change period. The main bearing shell is in hand. Here the quality of lubrication and traces of wear can be clearly seen with the naked eye. The bearing running surface clearly shows whether there was an oil film or overload or dry start. This is the cap of the one of the main bearings of the crankshaft together with the bearing shell and what we see here is practically a beautiful condition after 180,000 kilometers. No rust, no blue discoloration, no grooves. This means that the engine has received proper lubrication throughout its life. Full row of stationary bearings out on the bench. These have had the crankshaft in place throughout the engine's life. The wear pattern is even no rust, no heat damage. This is practically in nice condition after 180,000 kilometers. Now the remain stationary bearing caps are also removed, so the crankshaft is practically free in the block. Now comes the inspection of the crankshaft. Here the junior surface, discoloration, grooves and traces of the heat stress are hacked. The crankshaft journals are clean, the wear pattern is regular, which indicates stable oil pressure and proper load throughout the entire service life. If there were damage here, it would really mean a complete engine overall. This is not only an engine in good condition, but a well-preserved maintenance piece. They took the engine apart. What did the experts find? We decided we had found a holy grail, or I don't know what to call it. This is a perfect condition engine. None of the crank bearings or any of the main bearings have been touched. There is no wear on it. They are very beautiful. We found a really rare, rare engine in beautiful condition. So the seller is happy. The buyer is happy. A rare case. A very rare case. Because I say, this is the three art for the engine that it breaks down. And in fact, David said that in most cases, he also buys a car for dismantling. Either a bearing problem has already started or the engine has completely failed. When a bearing breaks, neither the crankshaft nor the connecting rod can be used. It's a junk engine. If a lucky person catches such an engine, how many out of 10, say one or two, are in such good condition? Roughly? I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen anything so the like it. The ratio is, that is bad? very uh -huh. bad. So then it's even worse. So why they produce such bad garbage in automotive industry? I don't know. Maybe these, these cubic centimeter slash liter performances are too much of a strain. These, I think they carry. They carry within themselves. I think they are pushing the newton yes. meter too the problem hard is to make that it people buy this. You know, there are several layers of people who buy it. First they buy it. Very rich people. They drive it. They drive the car. And then the after five years, noise. they replace it because they buy a new one. And then after that, there is a layer who doesn't really care about it anymore. And I think that's what's missing. Or some problem from the engine, he will sell it. Yes. I understand. Robbie, thank you for inviting us to record this engine so that others can learn from it. If you buy a dismounted engine, you really should take it to service station where they will take it apart or have it checked because you can learn from that not to buy junk that is good for nothing. That's but right. But really then buy something like that. How much does such an engine like the this engine cost? The engine costs around 4,000 to 5,000 euros. the value euros. of the car in which 15, case? 15,000 euros. So a third of a car. So it's not a small expense and it doesn't matter whether you buy a bad one or a good yes, one. Yes, and we were able to see it here under good conditions. The customer saw it, the buyer and the seller. Very good. So this is when a good deal is made. Everyone is happy. This way the business is as clean That's as right. possible. It's a win-win situation yes. and everyone is happy. Thank you very much for telling me. If you like the video, please press like. If you have any question about the engine, you sure. can ask a specialist ask or Kedvin's car service. And I'll ask someone else. Keep following us. Have a nice day. Bye, Bye. everyone.